In today's episode of the Power BI Show, I'm gonna take a look at one of my favorite features within Power BI Desktop, and that's q and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways in which you can use it, both to help you develop a report in the first place, and also as a feature in a final published report. And I'll take you through the process of how you can get it to answer a question using one of your own custom report pages. Before we dig into the detail, I just want to start by taking a quick look at how the Q&A feature has evolved in the Power BI desktop since it was first added a little over a year ago. Now, although Q&A had been a feature in the Power BI service for a while, it didn't actually appear into the Power BI desktop until December 2017. In preview and initially only available as an aid to report creation, gave you the ability to add visuals to your report just by asking natural language questions. The first update came in January 2018 when the natural language engine was updated to enable you to ask top end and bottom end type questions. And then in April 2018, the Q&A Explorer was added to the mix, giving you a way of adding the Q&A experience to your report for the benefit of report consumers. With the August 2018 update, Q&A was finally made generally available and along with it there were some improvements made to the matching capabilities against data in your data model. And these included values being compared word by word instead of entire values at once, spelling corrections being taken into account, plurals, punctuation, and accent insensitive matching. In November, the ability to ask follow-up questions was added to the Q&A Explorer dialog, and this allows you to click on an Ask Related Questions button and then answers to your question take into account the previous question's context. So for example, you might ask for the products for a particular manufacturer, and then you can go on to ask a related question about sales for each of these products. In December 2018, support for live connections was added in preview. And finally, with the February 2019 update, which is the latest update at the time of recording this video, we get the ability to ask Q&A insights related questions, such as explain the changes in sales between 2017 and 2018. And you get the same kind of insights that you'd get through the analyze option in the context menu. And the Q&A Explorer now comes pre-populated with some auto-generated suggested questions for your report consumers. And this is useful because it will give them some idea of the kind of questions that they can ask Q&A. OK, so let's start off by taking a look at what Q&A can do for you as a report creator. I go onto a blank tab and we start off by either clicking on the Ask a Question button on the ribbon or you can double click on a blank area on your report canvas. And that brings up a dialog box that asks us to ask a question about our data. Underneath that we get a visual representation of the uh, the visualization it will create in response to the question that we ask it. So I'll start off with something simple. Um, give me total sales amount by product cat and gory. And you can see as I start to type in the question, uh, the, it dynamically changes the chart that it's showing me in response to that. So um, I have a bar chart here that's given me, as you would expect, sales amount by product category. I'm then going to add to that and say by um, by year. And now it show, it's changed the chart to show me a breakdown of sales amount by year within the product category. Uh, and once I click off of the outside of the dialog box, the chart's then left, and it's exactly as it would be as if I'd created the chart manually by dragging and dropping values into the uh, the visualizations pane over here. I'm free to format that, so uh, let's give that a border maybe show the date labels and then I can double click again on my report canvas brings up yet another uh, Q&A dialog box so this time it's uh, let's say total sales quantity uh, by year so now we've got a line chart to start with and maybe I want to see that by continent and continent so now I get a bar chart. I'm gonna give it a hint. I can also give it a hint uh, as to the sort of chart that I want it to display. So if I ask for it as a matrix, it will then change the visualization to a matrix. Uh, and again, once I click off of that, I'm free to uh, go in and format that. Let's give that a border. And I can ask quite sophisticated questions. Uh, so let's do an example of a more sophisticated question. Let's get rid of that to give us some more room. Uh, I'll double click again. So this time I, uh, I want to take a look at um, total sales amount uh, 
by stores. So I now got a bar chart showing me whole breakdown of total sales amount by all the stores, and then I can say in the United Kingdom. And that will then show me uh, a bar chart just show just uh, restricted to those stores that are in the United Kingdom. And then again, I can give that a hint. So I say as a table, and I can say sorted by total sales amount. And that's in ascending order. I can then say, well, descending. And there you go, it's, yeah, so it's quite a sophisticated question. I've asked it there and it's given me exactly what I want uh, as a visual representation. Uh, it's just uh, sometimes you'll get a little uh, information box there and as it says, uh, we, not sure we've answered your question, so try and asking it a different way to see if you get better results. But actually, it's given me exactly what I've asked for there. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, Q&A. Uh, from the perspective of a report consumer. And we can do that by using a feature called the Q&A Explorer. Uh, to add that to our report, we need to either have a shape or an image or a button that we can associate uh, the Q&A Explorer action to. So I'm just going to select a button here. We've got a predefined one within the Power BI desktop uh, for Q&A anyway. So let's add that to our report canvas. Um, when I just click on click on that and look at the visualizations for that, I've got an action here. I just need to make sure that that's of a type Q and A. So as we've seen this before, where we had bookmarks, we would have had an action of bookmark, but this time we want it for Q and A. I'm just going to add a tooltip there as well. So ask a question. I'm going to move these out of the way for now, and then when I control click on that icon, that brings up my um, Q and A Explorer dialog box. So again, I can ask a question in here, so as we did before, so total sales amount by product category. And then one of the things we can do is if this is a common question that's asked, uh, we can add that to a set of predefined questions there, like clicking on the add this question button. And if I save and close that and then reopen it, you can see that uh, that's saved away there to be reused over and over again uh, by our report consumers. So that's handy um, for two reasons. One, it can give the report consumers a, an idea of the type of question that they can ask, uh, but it's also useful for any questions that are commonly asked. So we can have a whole series of commonly asked questions there on this left-hand side. One other thing we can do is ask a related question. So I'll start off by typing um, total sales amount by um, this is going to give me quite a long list so I've got all the stores so I'm getting total sales amount by all of the stores around the world I can then ask a related question uh, and I can ask it to show me uh, for stores in the United Kingdom. And then that's given me the total sales amount uh, for each of the stores, but only uh, restricted only those in the United Kingdom. And I can see my, uh, if I scroll down, I can see the original question I asked there and then scroll that up and see what the related question is. So you can see there, show, showing stores and total sales amount where the channel name is store and the region and country name that geographies are in is the United Kingdom. One of the nice features of the Q&A Explorer is you can actually get it to return one of your own report pages as an answer to a question. Uh, to do that, you need to set the Q&A uh, option on, on a particular report page and you need to give it some synonyms to work with. So let's show that in action here. Uh, go on to this report page we have here. This is actually one of the tool tips we set up for a, an earlier video. Uh, if I go into the visualization and the page information for that report page, and we have an option here for Q&A, we need to turn that on. And then I need to put some words in here that it will associate uh, with your question. So when you use those words in one of your questions, 
it will know to start using this uh, report page uh, as an answer. So in this particular one we have here is for sales quantity. So if I type in uh, sales quantity and we give it a comma separated list. So uh, if I put report test in there as well as another word and then we go back uh, let's bring up our uh, Q&A Explorer dialog and so now when I start to type in say sales quantity it brings back that report page uh, as, as the answer as the visualization and we can actually give that some uh, some more uh, more questions so that will filter that down so maybe we say sales quantity for the United Kingdom and I can also change the uh, the, the category there so uh, for computers and it changes our report page dynamically to give us the the answer to our question that we want there so that's a really nice feature now one thing I would have liked to have shown also today is in this video is how it uh, returns insight questions in, and the, in the Explorer. Uh, unfortunately though I can't get that to work at the moment. I've tried various things, I, I, I've tried uh, using this report, I've tried to use the example report that they give in uh, from the, for the Power BI team that put out for the, uh, the February update and that didn't work. Uh, I've tried it on a couple of different machines as well and that still doesn't work. Uh, so if I give you an example uh, of what I mean there, let's go back into the uh, Q&A Explorer dialog. Now what I should be able to do at this point is, is ask it to explain, so if I say explain the increase in sales amount for uh, 2012 and 2013 it should actually come back now and give me some insights into that uh, unfortunately what it's doing is giving me a warning here it says I can't find any insights in your data um, but what it should be doing is uh, it's responsive so let's uh, go back and produce another report here uh, let's ask this a question uh, show sales amount by year as a bar chart uh, what I should be able to do is do something very similar to this so if I right click here on the context menu I can say explain the decrease and it goes in and it builds up some insights there and this is what it should be displaying on the Q&A Explorer uh, but unfortunately it isn't working as it should at the moment so I'm not sure if that's a bug within in this particular release, um, but if that's uh, rectified in the next release or subsequent release, I'll, I'll make a note of that in the notes for this show. In order to get the best out of the Q&A feature, it's really important you spend some time setting up your data model correctly. There's a really great article here in the Power BI desktop documentation that goes into some detail about the things that you need to consider when setting up your data model. Uh, such, in, such as making sure you've got the relationships set up correctly, uh, that you give some thought to the table names and column names that you're using, uh, make sure you're using the correct data types, and that you've marked dates appropriately. Uh, and I'll leave a link to that in the show notes below. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, then please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. And why not leave me a comment in the comment section below, letting me know what you'd like to see on future episodes. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, then please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of when I upload new content to the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Power BI Show.